Hello, sir. Is there anything I could assist you with? The word AI has become a catch-all for anything technology and data related of late. From AI pictures, movies, driving cars, even the very phone you're likely watching this on is filled with AI, according to the marketing at least. Now it has become confusing to discern where the pre-AI line is drawn or how it benefits any given area specifically. They're waiting for you, Gordon in the test chamber. NVIDIA has been at the forefront of AI integration across their server and commercial industries, but at Computex last month, they made some big announcements that directly focused on their gaming portfolio. Now, RTX Remix has breathed new life into decades-old games, bringing Doom back into the spotlight, but was it ever really a way? Portal and the upcoming Half-Life 2 Remix improved further with industry-standard REST API integration, something which I have used myself for decades. The stateless and cacheable architecture adds more features, expanding the possible pipeline to enable external software such as Comfy UI and potentially more such as Blender and others. The increases here also include a new software development kit to extend the remixable games beyond the current fixed function DX8 or 9 limits it currently offers. AI texture up sampling and even high quality replacement textures using simple text prompts, the benefits for models are clear. Now they do not stop here though, Project G Assist, a tech demo, uses your RTX GPU to provide game tips and is able to take text or voice instruction to solve a game issue and even game awareness. No more Nintendo hotline dialing, now you can just ask Nvidia AI how to beat that end of level boss or find the golden fleece, if you can't be bothered to do it yourself. I cannot help you. Zelda! Now the speech from Jensen was as dynamic as ever, but like his leather jacket, the presentation rocked on the benefits AI and this new Nvidia RTX AI SDK offers to game development and the player base alike. Now the one thing that stood out to me most, offering a tangible benefit and one I had chance to test firsthand in London at an Nvidia press event in May, was the Nvidia Avatar Cloud Engine or ACE with its Covert Protocol AI demo, and the results were impressive and could breathe new life into RPGs, adventures, open world games, and even the development pipeline itself. NVIDIA ACE is a suite of digital human technologies. Now, ACE relies on a few core pillars, NIMS, which are pre-trained and packaged AI models. Now, with the latest iteration, it now includes the ability to run them on remote servers or locally on your PC, be it one of the RTX-powered laptops or an RTX GPU desktop. These inference models provide a distinct set of functionality. NVIDIA Reva Speech Recognition and Translation Microservice, it can, among other aspects, turn text into speech, TTS, convert speech into AI commands and instructions, ASR, and recognizing and processing them intelligently and even translate into other languages in real time, both for inputs and outputs. NVIDIA Nemotron 3 4.5b, mouthful that is, which is the small language model, the SLM, that enables a reduced inference and low latency model to run locally via your RTX GPU. Without this, the footprint computing cost and latency would be too large for your local device. Now finally, audio to face NVIDIA technology can take all dialogue, be it captured or generative, in particular the vowels and form them into real-time blend shapes on in-game models. This can be created dynamically using OpenUSD, Universal Scene Description, which was created by Pixar, or even baked out into pre-modeled and canned animation sets as required. There are others, such as NVIDIA Omniverse RTX, but these are optional enhancements and not required for the AI and procedural character interactions. Alex Miller, huh? Thought you were one of those tourists who can't resist striking up conversations with anyone in the lobby. Now, this is not an end-to-end -end holistic solution or even a complete AI character creator or even game engine. This is a toolkit. It's part of the developer's pipeline within the entire suite of gaming tools. Now, using the Covert Protocol demo as an example, this real-time interactive and playable detective noir style demo requires all of the services described, but also runs within Epic's Unreal Engine 5, using their meta-human character creator graphics features, such as ray trace reflections, and is built with in-world AI's character engine. This is used to build up the in-game NPC's motivations, emotions, reactions, and decisions with a complex learning model that adapts and reacts to yours, 
or even other NPCs actions. Now the NVIDIA A solution is just another cog in the wheel for teams to expand and enhance games whilst reducing the workload to create high quality dynamic and branching character arc stories and more. Now prior to the Computex update the demo was restricted to being a hybrid solution running the local game code on the PC but having to converse with the Nvidia cloud servers to upload, process and then download the required AI actions responses via a large language model LLM which is hosted within the Nvidia AI farm. This was how my demo in London was conducted and it was the most obvious cost of this was the latency. It presented itself as delays in your speech being processed and then the relevant AI model traversed that information to respond to you which was then delivered by the relevant NPC. Hey, can I grab a drink anywhere? Yeah. 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 Well, unfortunately, yes. Yeah. Our bar is closed due to the statute. Well, once we get more people, now this caused some obvious delays of a few seconds as the character mused its response. Now with this deployable NIM microservice solution, much of this can be stored locally on your RTX PC, laptop or even local server if being used within the development studio. This aids both the ease of development cost and infrastructure for small and large teams alike, but also means the game's characters and processing time is now local and cacheable which greatly increases the speed of interactions for the player and iteration times for the developers. The NIM server runs locally, which is built with Node.js, and via the relevant hooks from your voice, mouse, text inputs, and processed through the AI models, and then interpreted into the relevant actions, animations, responses, or even translations, which all become far faster, secure, and cheaper than a cloud-based option, making them more accessible. Someone must have dropped it. Good start, but something's missing. Now the tools provided offer a vast amount of scalability and customization. Using the parameters within each NPC, you can choose various traits and predisposed biases to dictate a stronger level of certain responses or actions, giving each NPC their own unique interests, backstory, and even secrets that you as the player could uncover and leverage. And in fact, this happened to me in my demo, Without me even knowing it, I spent time talking to the doorman, Taihun, and happened to uncover his aspirations of becoming a barman. This then led to an off-piste conversation about his favourite drink, which even turned up later in the bar. The traits and extensions to the core model mean that team can quickly iterate across hundreds of NPC AIs and even allow them to be fully or partially created, but still offering the flexibility to define all or some of these within the scope of the game, character or world. Now this vastly increases iteration and development time whilst always allowing an unprecedented level of dynamism and multilingual characters, meaning teams can create the game in their first language and allow the AI software to convert, translate and process across hundreds of other languages at compilation and even run time. This means we can have an exponential increase in game character interaction, variety, unique experience, comedic value and individual experiences for each and every player. All this whilst reducing cost and time, but still offering full control and customization control for the team. Now take one of the best RPGs in modern times, The Witcher 3, and the years of effort and time put into the complex side quests, unique character stories and motivations can now be expanded on dramatically without the need to ramp up the team count and contractors to do it, enhancing game development schedules whilst improving the quality, the scale and focus on other aspects. From a game studio perspective, this means much faster iteration times, low code base complexity, lower technical support and maintenance costs, and no need to handle long delays in localization stages and reviews of translation scripts, but still delivering and even improving on the high dynamic and branching worlds the gaming audiences now expect. But their lives were so busy, they rarely... Pers you picked the wrong fight. Ah. One of the biggest shifts the Covert Protocol demo highlighted were the ease of interactions and natural interfaces with all the characters. No more selection tree dialogues, no prefix responses that felt alien to your current gaming predicament. Instead, Everything felt far more innate and organic to you and the situation. Trying to trick one of the speakers into giving up information was a cerebral and even psychological challenge now, with it being far more accessible and challenging at the same time. 
The dynamic and often comedic responses also aided the enjoyment and with different responses for others in attendance reinforced how unique each encounter could become. Sure, this may repeat at times, and the demo certainly had some bugs showing its proof of concept footings, such as the aforementioned delayed responses, vacant and robotic faces and animations, and even some subtle voice changes. I've been dreaming of being the hotel's bartender for years. One day, I'll perfect the perfect cocktail. Possibly highlighting split personalities within the game's NPCs aside, the accessibility and diversity of the interactions you could have in such a small and confined hotel lobby highlighted the scale and scope of which this technology could transform some of our most enjoyed gaming genres. Imagine the next Fallout game incorporating this into its already complex speech and character system. You could coerce, persuade, convince, or even antagonize at will with just the power of your words. The Witcher remake could take the first game leaps and bounds above the third title's legendary levels, and it could all be done with less time cost and even greater dynamism than ever before. But this technology could also be used in a far wider level of choices, enabling much faster ports from English to Italian, Japanese or vice versa. Even single player narrative games could have huge portions of the game's scripted sequences, cutscenes and dialogue created procedurally or supported by this technology, aiding more dynamic encounters with little extra cost whilst expanding the choice for teams on where to focus their efforts and cost most. Although AI may not fit into every non-AI shaped hole it is currently being squeezed within, the NVIDIA ACE demo and dynamic NPC created characters demonstrated are a compelling argument for where the technology can offer drastic improvements for developers and gamers alike, and I look forward to seeing some of these aspirations soon in games to come. Tech issues. Well... I'll have to go demand some answers from them. And that's it for a deep dive into game technology development and all things video game related. Remember, if you like what we do here on IGN, then keep it IGN Performance Reviews, and we'll catch you on the next one. Excuse me? Hey there. Hi. Could you please ring my business partner, Martin Lane, for me?